Hey, this review is brought to you by Boxu, but we'll talk about that later. First, here's three white guys talking about comic book movies. Because uh, there's just not enough of that on the internet. So we had to do it. <laughs> I I kind of wish that the uh, the end credits for this movie was, They say that a hero can save us! I'm not gonna stand here and wait! Boys, Spider-Man. I've heard of it. Yeah, I, yeah. I uh, I think I actually watched that old cartoon, Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Radio radioactive. Movie. Yeah, yeah, the one that was on Fox Kids. And that show was called Spider Blood. They kept saying it in the Spider the Blood, song. Spider Blood, it was Radioactive, called spider, blood. spider Blood. Common ah, mistake. Yeah, yeah. But the, if they wouldn't sing it, then yeah. Spider Blood in the theme song a bunch. If that wasn't what it was called. Exactly. Uh, Twenty seventy seven also a clear hit on Fox. Uh, but, uh, I, I, I don't know if you've heard about this, a new movie came out that we just saw. It would be very weird if you hadn't heard about it since we did just see it. You know, for some reason I forgot all about it. Yeah? Yeah. That's I, weird. Something happened. Huh. Hmm. Why are we here? Why are we here? Why are we all here? So, Spider-Man, No Way Home, uh, uh it... it it came out. It happened. And I think it was pretty good. I uh, was actually... So, before this... Before I heard anything about this movie from people on my timeline on Twitter, I was dreading it. I, was, I actively thought that it was not going to be very good. And then people whose opinions I trust were like, that was great. I'm like, ah, oh, no. I, don't don't, I, I, I even posted one of my friends, they don't... Don't give me hope. <laughs> I, I liked the movie as well. I I didn't like it, the concept for the movie. I didn't want this to be the movie, but if this is the movie that we're going to get, I'm not sure they could have done it much better. It was, yeah. like, honestly, for what they were planning and what they ended up doing, the execution was great. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And, like, this is a movie I technically did not want, but the way they did it made me fairly happy, so I, I don't have much to complain about. Yeah, the, I was I was on the same train as you because we already got into the Spider-Verse. We're getting Multiverse of Madness with Doctor Strange. I was wondering why do we need more Multiverse bullshit and why are we well, doing it twice with Spider-Man? Well, th this is very particularly linked directly to the MCU that we have, though. Mm. I mean, it's it, the Spider-Verse, well, yes, that might be a universe within the Multiverse, is not direct canon in this universe. So they needed these events to, uh, I guess, give us that trailer for Doctor Strange that we saw at the yeah, very, very end. Yeah, right. Yeah, like, and I, that's the closest you're going to get to spoilers for now, I think. Yeah. And then yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll, There's well, a trailer we'll get, for Doctor Strange at the end. Yeah. Well, we're going to probably get into a spoiler section really quick. It's yes. hard to talk about this movie otherwise. Very much so. Uh, one of the things that I want to say uh, right out the gate this was not as messy as I feared that it was going to be. Yeah, it seems like it should have been a mess. Yeah, I, I honestly, I'm, I'm going to come from the other side of this. I really felt like Disney was not good. Like, if they screwed the pooch on this one, uh, they. Let's be honest. Shang Chi was good. Yeah. Eternals happened. Uh, it was also I, I enjoyed it, but it was you know just kind of there. I actually think you'd get a little bit out of Eternals. I think I probably will, uh, but not enough to watch it in the theater. That's so, yeah. I'm, so I'm waiting till it's out in January. On I, I still I still haven't seen Black Widow, although the new Hawkeye show is kind of tying itself into that. So maybe I'll go back and watch that at some point. I need it's, to watch it, Hawkeye. <laughs> Black Black Widow's fine. It, it I, I imagine that's, that the, is, that's the best I could say. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to get the Ultron thing in reverse, though, where I don't watch the thing that's kind of underwhelming until they give me all the backstory that makes it that makes more it whelming. Good. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> that it looks like that's what they're doing with Hawkeye right now. Might have been a good way to watch Thor: The Dark World too. Maybe like, yeah. After they talk about Rene Russo in, <laughs> in, in Endgame. But yeah, this I, I I did not see a world where Disney was just going to screw this up horribly. Uh, it, well, obviously that world can happen. Yeah. See Star Wars, but uh, with what we have right now, it's clear that they, at the very least, have oversight with what they are like bouncing between here. Even if some of these things really don't feel connected uh, right now. The thing that made me concerned was that I had heard that they were really cutting the production close on this one. And the last time we saw production get cut really close was in Black Panther, a much less ambitious movie, which is why that entire last fight scene looks like a fucking PS2 cutscene. 
I'd say PS4 Don't, cuts. I'd say last time I saw like movies being like cut really close, it was Rise of Skywalker, which went really badly. Yes, but, very badly. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, there's going to be a lot of comparisons to that movie, I think, because I, I personally had very similar reservations with this idea, the same way I did as soon as I heard Emperor Palpatine's laugh in the trailers for yeah. Skywalker, where I went, that's a really bad sign, actually. If they're going back to that well, that really worries me, and that's how I kind of felt about this concept. Um, luckily, they did this in a way that was a lot more thoughtful, um, showed a lot more care for not the only actual, the, not the only the, 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 sto the stories that, that are in of these villains that are in other movies, but, but specifically specifically focusing on this story as well and making sure this story paid off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very important that they did all those things at once, and they did. So shout out to Chris McKenna and Eric Summers, the screenwriters. Uh, Chris McKenna, uh, you guys would know from uh, Community. He, w he was a very common writer on Oh, there. really? Yes. Hmm. Uh, he, 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 he wrote the... Uh, he wrote the the different dimensions. Oh, 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 oh nice. That, the, the, di the dice episode? Yeah. Okay, that's pretty funny, actually, considering... <laughs> Yeah, and then, like, I think that kind of stuff is exactly what got picked up by Marvel. <laughs> I, I, I have to agree. The love for uh, the mythos of these characters is very, like, very well established. From the get-go, I feel like, the, no, there are only two characters mm -hmm. in the film that I was a little bit questionable about, but, uh, just questionable about their characterization. But enough is done well where it's, like, fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and, and, yeah. And Unless they're and your, like, favorite ever, then you might be a little disappointed, but, like, even then, probably only a little. And, yeah. and there are, are a couple, like, wink-at-the-camera moments where they make reference to uh, certain, like, mimetic scenes from, like, previous movies. Yeah, but uh, they don't hinge the movie on that. Yeah, no, but no. Like, like, like yeah. it's just like a little, ha-ha-ha, <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, Which like, they, fine, they, they have know? their moments, and, yeah. and, like, they have their meme moments, but they, but it's not like, again, it's not like Rise of Skywalker. I, I can't not, it's not like Rise of Skywalker where they have, like, the chewy metal at the end, and you're like, yeah, there you go. doesn't why, belong here. Why does he, why, why do you have a Yavin metal? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's no, like, I, I, it's. I'm really glad that I liked this film. I'm very glad that I liked this film because I'll tell you what, Far From Home left me burned, very burned. Because Far From Home was a film that I came out of liking well enough, but still thinking, ah, eh, it was flawed, but fun and, and still enjoyable. I've actually come to not like that movie. Why? Uh, because okay, first it removes Peter from where uh, from his home, like it, it puts him in Europe, away from. Aunt May from New York, where he's like, you know. Did like, you not like Infinity War, where it took him to space? Actually, <laughs> I, I kind of wish Spider-Man wasn't in Infinity. War. And that's, that's not fair. a fucking Spider-Man film, so don't start. That's but but Spider-Man's in it, and he did Spider-Man things. He did, um, but I, I didn't like the fact that it removed him from the environment that he's best known for. In his second film, uh, second oh, okay, Tom, uh, Tom's first, second outing as Spider-Man. Not like you know, obviously there was five fucking films before that. Um, six, oh god. Uh, point being, it, it, it escalated him too quickly. I kind of agree. I, as someone who actually thinks Far From Home is a very fun movie that yeah. you can watch and just enjoy watching, but its place in the Spider Man franchise when you're just watching Spider Man films on their own is dubious and a bit messy. And I, again, the, the, the issue there is actually Infinity War and Endgame, where they escalated him so fast to space, and you're like, Oh well, now they have to do this, and and I, I felt like no, they didn't. And but the the reason that they felt that they could do that, and I understand this, is that they had a they already established Spider Man. Like Spider Man is one of the biggest superheroes in the world, mm -hmm. so they knew that when they put him in there, nobody was going to wonder who this character was. They know who Spider Man is. Unfortunately, they did it with Tom. Holland's Spider-Man, a very young, very inexperienced character who did not have his own story. So, like, thrusting him into the MCU, and especially in the second film where it oh, saturates everything, and let me tell you, gets rid of Aunt May. She's barely in that second film, which, considering this film, where she's a big player, that actually sucks. Uh, yeah, they, they underserved Aunt May. Um, but, like, and they, like again, her home's... I think I'm on the end of Far From Home. Still a very fun movie. That's a good time. I, I think I think the funness of that movie outweighs all of these because I've seen I Spi I've, I've yeah. seen Spider Man in New York. Oh, I've I, seen it enough. Okay, mm -hmm. I also hate the glasses. I hate the glasses with a passion. I cannot they're, get they're over. A problem. Yeah, I can't get over how bad the glasses are from a perspective of Tony Stark creating them to giving them to Peter to Peter having them. Everything about the glasses is 
awful. They're, 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 a, they're a MacGuffin. They're, 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 they're a very morally dubious MacGuffin is the issue. Yeah. Um, that, the, and that unfortunately, I, I think we can rip this band-aid off. They don't address it in this movie. Oh, no. They kind of they kinda do. Uh, the the, I mean, the, the glasses fall, exist, but they exist. remember, they he, he, he the had destroyed... problem morally. Yeah, he, he had destroyed all the drones and shit that were connected to them, so yeah. they, they were already a non-factor start of this movie. Yeah, and yeah, it's just one of those things just like... Yeah, they, one thing, like, Far From Home, really, uh, all they had to do on that end was... I don't I've talked about this in, like, a video that I made, but, like, is... Uh, they needed to just address at the very end of the movie, hey, these murder glasses shouldn't exist. They're bad, and uh, nobody... Uh, can have enough responsibility to wield this power. It needs to be destroyed. Yeah, bad, uh, bad call, Tony. Yeah, yeah uh, and I and I'm totally cool with Tony Stark making that mistake. Yes, yeah. Tony Stark is kind of a bad person. I mean, um, I, I would I would say early Tony Stark, yes. Later Tony Stark, no. He's, well, he's, he's yes because he becomes kind of fashy. Oh, well, okay, all right. <laughs> to, to be fair, he does pretty much go like, hey, in, we, need, we need we need to put a suit of armor around the world. And in Endgame, yeah, he, 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 he argues for security over freedom. Like, yeah, he he makes. Like, he drives the plot because he keeps creating problems. Um, yeah. But anyway, like, I think, like, me and Scott do agree that, like, there were some issues with how they've been characterizing Spider-Man and how... And you feel like this movie addressed it a bit more, or...? Um, I, I think I would... it'll address a lot of issues. P the people who have those issues have been having. I definitely think the second half of this film is some of the best Spider-Man we've gotten in, in live action. In the, like, since the Raimi stuff. Me. Well, that's because you, you you have a movie that's really three stories. Uh, you have, like, I mean, you have your first act, then there's that middle chunk where a lot of the trailer stuff happens, and then you have your climax. Yeah. It is amazing, and, and, and we're going to have to get into spoilers soon, I think, but it is amazing how much of that film is not in that trailer because I'm they so glad. could not show any of it. Yeah, but you can still see a lot of it coming. I mean... Uh, point being, it's, it's it's not unpredictable. I'm glad they focus so much on the bridge. I know people get really annoyed by the bridge yeah. after a while in all the promotions, but you should be glad that they focus so much on the bridge because then there's so there, much. There's a lot experience. after that, yeah. and uh, I, I guess from here, like you know, just overall opinion, recommend, do not recommend because. It is nearly impossible to talk about this without spoilers. I think, luckily, if you're a fan of any cinematic version of Spider-Man, you'll probably leave this movie very happy. I, uh, Amazing Spider-Man for me is definitely one of those really, like, I can forget those films very easily. Okay, but we're talking about... Uh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Let me fucking get to my point, motherfucker. The Raimi films are kind of, for me, like this, like the, the classic Spider-Man live action stuff. The Holland stuff for me has always been kind of, do I love it? Do I not like it? And this, I feel like, is the best version of Tom Holland Spider-Man since we got since fucking uh civil war so since he was debuted yeah um and so i i can definitely recommend this film as you said for anyone who's a, who's a fan of like spider-man's cinematic outings this is probably this is probably the best we're going to get for like the definitely the best of the three mcu films like that focus solely on spider-man and the best since spider-man 2 it'll certainly make the most people happy yeah uh, I pretty much agree wholeheartedly with this. I think this might be the best Marvel movie since Endgame. Uh, at the very least, it's the first one to really generate like this amount of interest out of me since then, because they've just been meandering since. So yeah, hard recommends, good holiday watch. What else is out right now? Just <laughs> I mean, Matrix, but you can watch that at home. I'm going to. Wait, yeah. you can? Yeah, HBO, oh, Max. HBO Max, bro. Oh my god. I love HBO Max. December, they make December 22nd, this... HBO Max. I will be watching that so fast. Mm. I'm so excited for a different movie that we're not talking about right now. Uh, yeah, yeah. Which we can talk about later. I've heard, I've heard good things. I've heard good things too. I'm very excited. I recently rewatched that trilogy, but from here on, spoilers for No Way Home. But first, uh, here's an ad for you to watch. I'm gonna do that right now. This video is brought to you by Boksu. And Boksu wants to give you and a friend a chance to take a trip to Japan. More info on that after we try this delicious, delicious Boksu for this month. Put it at your door using the code BENTO10 at checkout. Get 10% off your Boksu subscription today. We're looking at the Hokkaido Holiday Box. We'll look through here to find our first 
Peace. And it is the Yubari Melon Chocolate Long Jashak Cookie. Melon and chocolate. Not a combination I've had previously. I'm very curious. It's different, but it's not bad. You have this like very delicate sort of cantaloupe musk melon flavor uh, combined with the very dense, crunchy Long Jashak Cookie. Kibi, Dungo, Mochi. Oh. It's like a day at Grandmama's Orchard. We got milky mochi, in case you hadn't had enough mochi today. <laughs> in the big milkies. Now, you, got, you got the peaches, now you get the milkies. Mmm. <laughs> Pinaco black sesame soft candy. Looks like tiny cookies. Oh, it smells good too. I do love, one of my favorite things about black sesame is it almost rides the line of kind of a sweet and the savory flavor combination every time I have it. Hokkaido Yoichi apple gummies. Apple. It's like a mouthful of apple juice. Yeah, it is. It's a mouthful of apple juice. Like, that's probably one of the better apple flavored candies I've ever had. Ooh, an oldie but a goodie. Funwari Meijin Mochi Puffs. Oh my gosh. Hokkaido milk flavor. Mm. I was not expecting the outer layer of the chocolate. That's actually really pleasant. I like that. Sweet potato cookies. Oh wow. At, at first it tastes like shortbread cookie. Yeah. But then it comes around. Tobiki corn chocolate. It's like a tiny little corn granola bar. Reminds me of those little cereal bars. Yeah, actually, I can see that. I hope you ain't done with corn, because now we got Mike, a buddy Mike popcorn. Butter soy sauce flavor. Soy and popcorn makes sense to me, because, you know, if you like salty popcorn. Oh yeah, 100%. Jago Choco potato chips, white chocolate. Mm. I love chocolate dipped potato chips. It's hard to, it's hard to lose there. Wasabi Yama oh, yes. Wasabi rice crackers. Mm. <laughs> That wasabi hits. Jaga. Pokuru. These are the best cold french fries I've ever had. And that does it for this month's Hokkaido holiday boksu box. No, you must be kidding, that's it? Hey, look, all I'm saying is I just want more boksu. Okay, fine, you know, you could ask, you could Taste ask. Taste the season of giving, Kaiser. Yeah, let him have it. And, okay. and occasionally take it. Yeah, apparently the season of taking. Really? And remember, you can get your delicious boksu box by using the code BENTO10 at checkout for 10% off your subscription. Thank you so much, and now on. Hey, it's Stefan. I'm editing this video, and I'm here to right some wrongs. Those wrongs being that they forgot to mention that in the month of December, all subscribers, new or old, get a chance to win a trip to Japan, which is very important to mention. So now I have done it, and now we can move on. It's up, yes, Pacho. Yum, yum, yum. Woof. Fucking love Willem Dafoe. He is the highlight of this movie for me, hands down. I you, love him in almost love, everything you love he's in. Hammy villains I in do. <laughs> Wait, is Willem Dafoe a spoiler? I feel kind, like he's, kind, he's, kind he's of. They the don't trailer. really he's show. He's in the trailer. Oh, he? Okay, well, still. Yeah, he's going, <laughs> also, trailer. he's got some lines. I, yeah. I actively avoided most trailers for this, so I don't know what is and well, what isn't. We, we, we in. did a good job not spoiling people. So. Yeah, yeah. We're so in the spoiler I, section. We can talk about whatever the fuck yeah, we want. Yeah, Willem Dafoe, big highlight for me, and also I really liked his performance. Yeah, yeah, and uh, big credit to the visual effects team. Digital de-aging has come a long way. They did a very good job. I can only see it sometimes. Yeah. Uh, very rarely. I. It, it helps that he's in dark rooms yeah, a lot. Sometimes they look airbrushed, but like very rarely. It looked pretty good most of the time. Yeah, he, like he looks fresh out of Spider-Man 1. It, it's it, crazy. Help, it helps that Willem Dafoe just looks the same, but with more lines. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> One of my favorite jokes about Willem Dafoe is like, if you need a movie monster, but don't want to buy a lot of makeup. <laughs> Like, cause he's got such an expressive, crazy I, looking face. I recently saw The Lighthouse for the first time and it's like- He's so good, I love I that! Need, his mon his that monologue in that? I need to see that very badly. I just, just buy it on Amazon and watch it. Like, uh, yeah, just rent it. It was free I on have, Amazon I, for a long time. I have it on Blu-ray. It still I just, is. Yeah, go watch it on Amazon Prime. I have it on Blu-ray! Then watch it. Yeah, but why, if you own it, because- Watch my, the weird homoerotic sailor movie. Yeah! <laughs> um, actually, I have to tell the story real quick. It's very quick. Me and a couple of friends were gonna watch the movie, but we got way too high. So in the first five minutes, we decided to stop watching it and watch Grandma's Boy Uncut. Okay, I mean, probably good a good decision not to watch that movie super high. Yeah, yeah. You know, that, that's that's, that's a movie that's hard to that's a movie that's hard to follow sober at times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It probably would have kind of like 
turned it into a bad time. I just love <laughs> I just love the fact that I can tell people I've lost all my movie credibility by saying I was gonna watch The Lighthouse, but instead I watched Grandma's Boy Uncut. I don't think you lose credibility by saying you haven't watched The Lighthouse. The White House, Lighthouse is just really it, no, good, it, but if, no, you're, no, if you're not no, into artsy no, shit. No, it's about choosing Grandma's Boy over, over The Lighthouse. That's the problem. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, like Willem Dafoe did a great job. Uh, Alfred Molina did a great job. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I thought all the all the villain act, all the actors in general. Uh, at, this is something we can spoil now. Yeah. Uh, the other Spider People are in it. Mm -hmm. The other two Spider Men are in it. This is my favorite performance of Tobey Maguire as his past. Oh Peter my Parker. god! Right. Because I'll be honest, I rewatched the Raimi films recently. He fucking annoys me in those movies. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's an annoying little bitch in those movies, and it annoys me. Peter Parker, not to, not necessarily Tobey Maguire. I'm not insulting the dude. Right. Um, but Peter Parker annoys the shit out of me in those movies, mostly because of the script. I, um, I, and, I and I really liked him in this movie, which was kind of a a wall to get me over at this point. I I don't watch I I grew up with those movies, and but I watched it pretty fresh, and I got annoyed. I think the Raimi films are a little bit of an acquired taste for some people because it I, all depends I, on how you feel about three. I love three. I, but three <laughs> three is fun. I, like they're all fun in yeah. their own ways. Spider Man One's kind of boring. Um, it but is. Like, Willem Dafoe is I can, the carrier. My, my big problem is I can't get into the human drama of them. I, yeah. I think that, that part kind of sucks. It's, it's, it's very melodramatic. But the action is amazing in Spider-Man 2 and 3. Both of them have great action scenes, and Raimi does, has done, to this day, I think, No Way Home did some good stuff, but to this day, the best action that Spider-Man and Spider -Man superhero 2. films in general have ever seen. I went back to rewatch The Train Fight, the it's train really fight good. is insane, and I was actually like, I, I wish like superhero movies now would make me feel that way. Actually, Amazing Spider-Man has some stupendous, stellar action sequences. Uh, when, the, when 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 all of New York's like cranes just okay, all turn okay. it. All right, look, I already <laughs> said those films are throwaway for me. Okay, there's a reason. Just they had some good action. Yeah, no, the lizard fight was pretty good. Like the the the, the electro fight in two is stu fucking. I like the I, I don't Times remember. Square one. I remember very little about two. I saw it once and kind of forgot about it. You I, should, should rewatch. It's it's so funny. It's it, so funny. It's a really funny movie. Also, fucking Emma Stone and Andrew Garfield have insane chemistry. Well, they were dating they were, at the time. because they were actually fucking. Uh, hey, <laughs> and, and, and you know, uh, maybe that they, they literally just let them improv those scenes. You know yeah. that, right? And maybe that explains some of the chemistry we finally, finally get from MJ and Tom Holland in this movie. Because I'll be honest with you, I was not feeling them in the last two movies. Not a lot. But in this one, I actually felt a lot more than I did in Save Far well, they, From Home. They got more comfortable in like their relationship and also, yeah, like not going to get into their business, but it seems like they might be dating, but that's their fucking business. They clearly want that to be private. I think I think they have confirmed They have not confirmed it because oh, okay. they want it to be their private okay. life. Okay, hey, that, it, I want it to be their private life as no, well. Yeah. I don't care if they're dating. I, 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 yeah, I, I think they actually... Bring that up as context. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, they and you, you, you even get some kind of like real world connotations of that because, you know, Peter Parker's constantly getting hounded by the press throughout like the first yeah. whole oh, act yeah. of this movie and you get this shot of them like walking into school. She's like, you know, holding his hand and there are people that are like, you know, oh, Peter, get fucked you for what you did to Mysterio. And then yeah. there's like this MJ fan out of nowhere. It's like, oh, God, yeah. Like, yeah, the significant and, other and does and just kind of get dragged into this shit. The yeah. actual real life Tom Holland has talked about in interviews how he has nightmares that paparazzi, that, that he can't move, that he has sleep paralysis, and pa paparazzi are just taking pictures of him while he can't move and no one's helping him. Ugh. He's talked about having recurring nightmares of that. So, so, so yeah, I, I, think, <laughs> I think you get a lot of, you know, like, you, you get a lot of, like, Real life for these people in yeah. some of this early chunk. I was, of I was the... feeling that in the beginning, having read that, like the interview where he's like, "I'm really tired." Paparazzi uh -huh. have no rights. Because there, there's no, this, yeah, fuck paparazzi. There's this level of fame that, like, once you pass a certain threshold, your life becomes you, nearly you, you unlivable in yeah. certain situations. Like you and me, we've gone to conventions, and it's cool getting recognized and getting to meet people, signing autographs. It's cool, but that's like you know, you do that on the weekend, then you come home, and not everybody at the fucking drive thru is like, "Oh my god." Yeah, yeah, you go home I, and most people don't give a fuck who yeah, you are. Yeah, that's I, great. Yeah, I cannot imagine if my life were like going to a convention every time. It would suck. That sounds... Like, some people are probably thinking, oh, that sounds awesome, I get recognized all the time. I would not want that. Anonymity is so good sometimes. Like, like just not like literally, but like just like being able to walk around and no one gives a shit. Like, yeah. that, that's great. So, which is like, you know, kind of like an overarching theme throughout this movie because yeah. he goes to Doctor Strange like, hey, can you make everybody forget? And I love Benedict Cumberbatch's scenes throughout this. He's always been like it's, one of my favorite actors in the MCU. 
it's so weird how they used all the worst versions of the scene for the trailer. Yeah. Like, the, like every version of the scene that, that, that that's in the trailer is a bad version, and in the movie you get the good version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, oh yeah, actually, if anybody's like, if you're watching this, I hope that you've already seen the movie or just don't care about spoilers, but yeah, Every is... single shot is different in the trailer mm -hmm. uh, of Benedict Cumberbatch. It's a different version of the scene, and in the movie you get the real version, which is much better. Yes, the <laughs> Scooby-Doo line is way less fucking Because he says shit for one, but also oh, yeah. like, yeah, like, it, it's clear that they did alternate versions of these scenes for trailers. Yes. And it, it feels a little like Benedict Cumberbatch like, oh, now I, I did the real acting, now I gotta do the trailer acting. And that might be the problem with, the, with like a lot of that stuff, but also like, it's all neutered versions of it. And... I, I do want to say, Doctor Strange in this movie, while being really fun um, and funny and, and well acted and having some great scenes, it comes off a little questionable in his, like, um, how do I put this? Why are you sending a bunch of children to go do this? You are literally the Sorcerer... Okay, technically not the Sorcerer Supreme. Weird retcon that they did. Not, not, not a retcon. Not a retcon. It's... Uh, did they he got blipped for five years. Yeah. They, well, the, no, but this, he, this he, is the first time they're addressing it. He wasn't Sorcerer Supreme at, at the end of Doctor Strange either. Was, was he not? No, he, did, he hadn't completed his character... He's, he's not completed his character arc at all. Like, hmm. he, he never became Sorcerer Supreme. And honestly, in the comics, he doesn't immediately become... He's not always Sorcerer Supreme. Okay. Uh, like, it's, it's, it's a misinterpretation because that's the most famous idea of him. All right, fair enough. It just, it was a little bit awkward when, like... Uh, uh, I love that Wong's, Wong is Sorcerer Supreme. I, that's what I wanted. Hey, look, Wong, Wong, by the way... He's a better Sorcerer I, Supreme for a while. I, I love that Wong just keeps showing up on the sides of a lot of these movies. Because he's fucking great! Well, and, now, and now it makes sense why he's show, showing up to, like, talk to Shang-Chi, and, like, he's doing... And he's making all these connections. Like, he's Sorcerer Supreme, he's... Yeah, he's getting, the one who's trying to hold the like he's the one who's trying to hold reality together. Yeah. And then uh, one of my favorite like back and forths between them was like uh, when uh, Peter Parker's talking to Doctor Strange, like, well, I, I, don't, I don't know what to do from here. I mean, maybe I guess I could talk to them, like you know, because this whole thing is like he wants everybody to forget so his friends can get into MIT and so like they can stop being famous and all this shit. So he wants everybody to forget that he's Spider Man, except for. These people, which ends up, you know, making your plot happen. Yeah. Uh, so. And that, and that that version in the movie is way better than the version of the trailer. Too. Yes, very much so. It's, I, it's a lot more explored and like, why is this going wrong? I love their conversation of, so wait, you came to me before you even tried to talk to the school before you even. So you, <laughs> you just wanted to fuck out, yeah. <laughs> just wanted to globally amni like amnify this. Yeah, you wanted me to brainwash the entire world because you didn't go talk to the school? Well, when you put it like that... <laughs> yeah, it's really good. And, like, I like that Doctor Strange is still, like, a prickly asshole. Mm -hmm. um, but he also sh has a lot of empathy for Peter. And he really, he clearly really likes Peter. Yeah. Because uh, everyone... Li that's, the, that's the common thread throughout all these MCU Spider-Man movies that I really love. Which is that everybody, including his enemies, loves Peter Parker. Mm -hmm. e like, like in, in Vulture... Like, he loves Peter Parker, he doesn't want to hurt him. <laughs> uh, Quentin Beck gets mad that someone someone's going to make him kill Peter Parker. He's like, I don't want to fucking kill Peter Parker, I like that kid. Yeah. And then in this movie, the villains don't lo don't dislike Peter Parker. <laughs> no one hates this kid. Yeah, the, the only real villain you have is uh, Willem Dafoe, who's, you know... Who's only guys, half villain, yeah. Yeah, disassociative identity disorder, where, like, you know, the goblin takes over... And, you know, Norman Osborn goes into the sunken place for a while. So... And, like, I, I really like to, to, to touch on that. Like, I really enjoy how... I, I believe these writers, like McKenna and, and Eric Summers, uh, they, they're clearly huge Spider-Man fans. Because, um, like, they think about these things the way I see other Spider-Man fans online think really hard about these things. Because they thought of the exact same shit that a lot of Spider-Man fans did. And, like... One of the big things that they they saw as something that needed to be corrected, and I agree with them, is that in a lot of the, a bunch of these old previous movies, Spider Man was responsible for killing these these villains, mm -hmm. and that's not quite right, uh, especially the way they were characterized, where they, these characters did not deserve to die. Yeah, uh, although. Um, uh, Alfred, it, Alfred Molina sacrifices himself. Uh, yeah, Willem Dafoe. Like, all Spider-Man does is jump out of the way of the glider, right? Yeah, he, he's not responsible for either of their deaths. He, he's... He, yeah, no, but, like, like it's one of those things where it's like, these characters he could, didn't... He couldn't save them, though. Yeah, yeah, these characters didn't deserve to die. 
Um, and they, and the Spider Men recognize that. Like yes, these guys and, didn't and deserve like, what happened to them. I just wasn't in a position where I could actually help them. Yeah, and like so, and and I, I really like just like oh we can fix it. We can we can make it better. And it's like okay, and that probably just creates branching timelines. Like the the ones that we saw were the ones in the in the original movies, and that still happened to them. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, but, like, yeah, like, this is... I, I really like the idea of just, like, no, like, these are people who need help. They're not evil people. And I I, I like that, A, because um, it's just nice. It's a nice thing to do. And they point out that these are people... It's a very Spider-Man thing. And Tom Holland Spider-Man points out, like, these are people with, like, physical and mental ailments. They need help. And something uh, very much so that uh, Aunt May points out as well. She's a big driving force and like, yeah, no, these people need help. You, yeah, you can't just throw them not, back to yeah, die. Yeah, exactly. Like, they're not, they're not deserving of death. And, and B, it helps because, like, part of my problem with this concept is a problem that's not totally fixed, but it helps is that this is Peter's meeting Dr. Octopus, Lizard, Sandman, Green Goblin, Electro. He's meeting all these characters... It, characters for the first time as these people who aren't the ones that he, that he should know mm -hmm. in his own universe yeah that still bugs me a little bit but it helps here now that like even if he does meet them he may not suspect them of being bad people immediately because these people weren't all bad people yeah uh, there were people who needed help so like he's not going to instantly be like you're a villain i'm gonna get you like he's he might give them benefits of the doubt and whatnot um i still wish he could meet them for the first time in his own universe. Right. Well, uh, you, you never know. Maybe at this point... Um, God, it, it's it's really weird, because the way it ends... Um, jumping way to the tail end spoilers here. In order to undo this shit that's literally ripping apart the universe, Doctor Strange actually does have to do the original spell that makes everybody forget who Peter Parker is. Yeah. He has uh, to complete the spell. Yeah. So he has to complete that so that the universes will go back to the way they were. Yeah. And... Uh, you, you end up in this situation where will people still remember that there was a dude on a flying like like a dude in green armor flying around because people yes. still recognize that Spider-Man was around. The only thing they forgot was the existence of specifically Peter Parker. Okay, so there's a there's a distinct possibility that you might end up with like some copycat people that do take on some of these like roles within the universe yeah which i wouldn't love either but like it's whatever you don't um, you don't have an oscorp so you can't have a norman osborne unfortunately yeah i didn't like them saying that either because i i don't like taking that piece off the board if they were going to introduce oscorp i really thought they were going to do it in iron man 3 when they were like introducing iron patriot and all that stuff i was thinking they could do it in armor wars like it could be one of the, one of the companies along with roxon and like like aim yeah I like I wasn't too surprised when they said that there were, like, I believe, if I remember correctly, they actually talked about, in maybe a prior interview or something, that Os the Osborne family didn't even exist in this universe. Yeah, which I hate that. I, I, mean, I, 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 I specifically just don't like, take, again, taking those pieces off the board, because, like, what if you want to tell those, what, what if someone wants to tell those stories? What if the next director or creative person who runs the next trilogy? Yeah, what if they have a really good idea yeah, for a Norman like, Osborne arc? The, and, like, they could still be there. They could still exist. They could just... Just start stop Oscorp after yeah, Osborne like, showed up here. They could just decide to ignore that. Yeah, like fine. somebody's been defaming my name, like something, something, blah, blah. And I am Oscorp Norman just Osborne. Isn't and... where, where he expected it to be, and maybe it's somewhere else. Yeah, because I mean, you, you have J. Jonah Jameson, who's essentially Alex Jones in this universe, which I thought was, you know, I, uh, first of all, very on the nose. Uh, second of all, pretty <laughs> damn funny in execution. It. it does, it, it, it at least makes me happy that in another universe within this story, there is a version of J. Jonah Jameson that is respectable. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I don't know. Like, I, I do have that, that core issue. Like, part of my problem with this concept was just, yeah, I, I wish Peter could meet these characters on his own terms in his own universe. Yeah, because, like, the way we get it, um, you know, Doc Ock is the first one to show up. And uh, it, they have, like, a pretty cool fight scene. Yeah. But then he almost immediately gets job due to Stark Tech. Uh, <laughs> I I, th I thought that was actually really fun. Though. I did too. I, th I, I thought it was also, fun. I really liked it that it showed Peter's like more mischievous side, where he's like, yeah. <laughs> huh? oh, like, like fuck with your arms. Like, try, he tries to punch him, like, ooh. <laughs> he's, like, he's, like, he's like goofing off with it, and he's like, yeah, he, like get, he gets control of his tentacles because of all the nanotech that just like sunk into them. Yeah, it is a great it's a great moment, not just because yeah, it gets to be a great character moment for Peter, but just also like it's a great 
idea of how to de-escalate that situation and move the plot along. The nanites of his yeah, cause, suit... Yeah, because he can't be the main focus. Yeah. Because you got a lot of other things to introduce here. Yeah, it was, it was really clever. I really liked that. Um, I think I even seen, like, one or two people mention online, it's like, wait a second, what if he, what if that, like, you know, that armor of his, because I think there's at least one or two shots that it's red and turned red, yeah. and some people were doing some heavy theorizing on how that would uh, turn out. The internet tends to do that. Yes. Yeah, and, and like, and yeah, that, that was fun, and like, I, I do like also that they took all the old suits off the board, and they made Peter make his own suit. Yes, and at really the like end, look at the new he, he has the, like, he has, it's very much, like, kind of the closest we get to the classic comic suit, it seems like. Yeah, it's in, like, the material is actually very similar to Amazing Spider-Man mm -hmm. in terms of, like, the shininess. Amazing Spider-Man 2 specifically. I, uh, I, I really, I found that really interesting. Um, you, you also, you finally got your wish where Peter Parker is now a broke-ass man living alone in a shitty apartment. Hey, look, I didn't need, I didn't need all of that. I just don't want my Spider-Man, like, because... But you, you know got it. <laughs> I don't want to go too far into it because I'm going to set some people because, uh, like, m apparently my idea that uh, Spider-Man should be a working man's hero is fucking weird to some people. And I think that's a pretty normal take. And, like, I agree. Like, I didn't mind his connection to Tony Stark, but I did, did wish he didn't take over everything. That, I've always had that problem. Yeah. I have always... I, I, I liked him knowing Tony Stark and, like, having this relationship. I... I thought the per interpersonal relationship between them was great, actually. Yeah. I just wish it, it hadn't it, 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 I, consumed the whole character. Yeah, it. It, it played out, like, it played out very well in both of their arcs, in terms of, like, Peter, like, yeah. try, like you know, Tony trying to pass the torch on to the next generation and, like, you know, be a good person. Yeah, but and, it, it's definitely time to move yeah. on from the, that relationship. And that's what this film... Okay, so this film... Mm -hmm really feels like it took a look at what the MCU has been doing with Spider-Man. It was like, we, we disagree. Need, we, need, we need to course correct a bit. Yeah. I mean, these are the yeah. same writers from Well, they, from need home. A, they needed a fresh start. So they... Really? Same writers from Far From Home. Um, but but I think they, they they were working with what they had. Um, and I think now they're, they're like, okay, yeah, like, in order to get Spider-Man back to where I think people want Spider-Man to be, which is a street-level hero. That's what he is. That's where he's most fun, in my opinion. When he's doing street level New York stuff, mm -hmm. uh, and when his conflicts are smaller scale, it, and not everything needs to be the end of the world or the end of a city. I, uh, I'm okay with like a city wide thing. Sure, it, 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 like New York could be destroyed. Cool. That's the level of like that's the high end level uh, conflict I like. With and yeah, every once in a while, Spider-Man gets involved in a big event. Yeah, he, yeah, he gets forward. pulled into like, the big event though, like, like by know, people who are on this cosmic scale. Like yeah. when when they inevitably reintroduce the Fantastic Four. Yeah, uh, and like you and, know that like that's yeah. how they pull in Spider-Man to do some of that galactic shit. Guess who's directing Fantastic Four? Who? John Watts, director. Same of, guy uh, that directed director this. Director of all the all three of the Spider-Man movies. Okay. I'm, I actually am 100 percent okay with that. To I think totally, he can do a good job. Yeah, I think that's a really good pick. And because he's so like this, is something I noticed. Like I think this is part of why I really liked Toby as as Peter more in this movie than I ha did in the, his original ones is that he had a lot of freedom to like banter with the others and like feel very like a real person. Yeah, also, uh, he, uh, also he seemed a lot more mellowed out, and they even, you know, played him off as, like, yeah, no, I've been doing this for a while. Like, he is the older Spider-Man. And they played his kindness, yeah. like, a lot. Oh, um, my God. Okay, I, I, I cannot tell you how much I love the characterization for Toby's Peter. Actually, he's very not, big brother. Not just Toby. Fucking Andrew, Andrew Garfield. This is, I, this this is, is, he's yeah, a is, giant doofus, and I love it. I will say his accent's so completely different mm -hmm. uh, in this one. He 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 took on the John Larson accent from uh, from Tick Tick Boom. Yeah. Uh, but that was probably the last thing he did with an American accent, so it's fine. Uh, but like he had like in in the Amazing Spider-Man movies, I just rewatched them. He, he he talks like this. He's like he has like a really strong like trying New York to do accent. the New York thing like real yeah. hot. It gets really thick, and here he's he's a bit it's more like normal, like general Midwestern American yeah. accent. Uh, uh, but like, yeah. But they both did a great job. They're both very fun. Um, yeah. And they both get their own thing to do. And I I, I, I really love that they gave him the moments of. Uh, seeing MJ in trouble and he got to save her like that that was actually like kind really of really good. emotionally touching because like you know how much that meant to him and you could see it on screen I mean yeah he goes are you okay and she she says yes and he's like are you yeah, yeah. Dude, she's like he's are you okay yeah he's about to fucking start bawling I was oh I, I love mean, that moment see, so fucking like, much they made sure to touch on it like earlier in the movie where where, where, they're, where they're all where you know trauma about, dumping on each other he just other. talks directly about Gwen and how and you can see how much it's fucked him up and he talks about how he's just sort of thrown himself entirely into Spider-Man and 
he's gotten maybe a bit more ruthless than he used to be. Like, he's in a dark place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this maybe pulled him a bit out of it. It gave him some closure. That was everything I... Honestly, when I saw her falling in the trailer, there was that part of me, and a lot of other people I saw say this. A lot of people theorized yeah, that a lot it would of people, be a moment for Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. Yeah, thinking, wow, it would be amazing if Andrew were the one to save her because he couldn't save Gwen. And I was over here like, are they brave enough to actually do it? And they did. Yeah, and, and, it, yeah, and, and it, it played like, out really well. And again, it really helps. Like the like Chris McKenna and Eric Summers, I'm going to give them a lot of credit for this movie because they did a lot of fucking work that's really hard to do. Um, like they, they made sure that 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 they paid attention to every single character's arcs, not not just like in previous movies, but made one for this movie mm -hmm. for every single character. Which is amazing. It's I, hard to do. It, I we, we said this earlier. This could have been insanely messy. And it, it's amazing that it's not. Like, yeah. it's, it's insane that, it's, they, that they pulled it it's off. Spectacular, even. Yeah, I, yeah it's... I, I, I did... I it's did, superior, no. When, when fucking... Ultimate. Um, <laughs> when Toby and Andrew are talking, and, yeah. and, and he's You're like, amazing. You're, you're amazing. amazing. You're amazing. I want to hear you say you're amazing. It's, I, 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 I just I just, I just need to hear it. <laughs> yeah, like, they're, like, yeah, they're like, the good meta, like, stuff of, like, Andrew's Spider-Man thinking he's lesser. I love the line where he just goes... I want to fight an alien. <laughs> I fought a guy in a I, robot I, rhino suit. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I laughed. I I laughed more in this movie than I had the previous two Spider-Man films. And I and I'm. It's a really funny movie. It's it is. insanely funny, and in, a, in the right ways. Not it, like it. And there was, it feels very improvised. I like. I it's almost, just the kind of delivery that they. If do. Andrew Garfield's line about him looking like uh, Toby looking like a youth pastor wasn't his, I'd be amazed. Yeah. Um, that cool that, that could easily be scripted, I think. Yeah. I uh, mean, I just, again, McKenna's a comedy writer. Like, yeah. I will say this: there is one piece of snark that I could have done without. What's that? It's the last lines from Andrew and Toby, where uh, like after uh, Tom takes off, and they're like, "You're in a lot of pain, huh?" I was like, okay, we, we get it. You're snarking right up to the last well, They, they needed one they're last spider -Man. thing. Spider-Man. I know. I know they're Spider-Man. Well, how are like... else they going to communicate with each other? That, that, that's their language. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, my God. That just, like, yeah, three Spider-Man on film. MCU writers. Yeah, no, that, like, what better characters to just snark at each other forever? <laughs> exactly. Although, I will say, luckily, the chemistry on screen works incredibly well. All three spider well. spider man really bounced off each other extremely like they, they dedicated an entire scene to just them talking to each other just <laughs> I, in, like specifically about toby Maguire's biological web shooter oh my yeah. god that whole scene they, the, really the fact that they brought that i was like oh god that just comes out of your wrist <laughs> that left me in stitches it was really good mm -hmm. um i will say it's a good thing they had them talking all of the time because during those action sequences i was like Fuck, which, which one is it? Is yeah. that? I can't tell. Yeah, and, and they did the voiceovers. Yeah, because yeah. that's how you gotta do. Yeah. Dur uh, dur uh, during the beginning of it, I'm like, okay, which one is fighting what right now? Because the only one I could track was um, Tom Holland, because at that yeah. point he had it, the big golden spider yeah, he had on him. Stuff on him. Uh, yeah, and it was it was like, yeah, like again, like this is a concept I didn't necessarily want, uh, but I, I sort of like let myself acclimate to like, okay, this is what I'm getting. Let me enjoy what it what it is, and like once I, when I did that. Again, they did it pop probably the best anyone could. Uh, it's it, it, I'm not I can't imagine a script that would pull this off better while still being Tom Holland's movie. I will say the scene where they find the other two Spider Men is a weird, but it, it's funny. It's, well, like it's also it. because it introduces something very odd as well in the fact oh, that right? Ned is now just kind of a a protege sorcerer. And I think that that might be their way of keeping Jacob Batalon like in the movies is to maybe involve him in Doctor Strange yeah. stuff from now on, just to keep him around and maybe create a, a roadway back to Peter at some point. Yeah. Spe speaking of kind of messy action sequences, what did you think of the fight between Peter and Doctor Strange? I liked it a lot. That was oh, really that, fun. That scene was sick, and I love the way he he worked it out. Mm -hmm. uh, that and it's, it's, how how he's like, wait a minute, this this, this is, is just geometry. geometry. I know yeah, math. Really, they really focused in this movie on the fact that Peter is Smart. a super genius. Um, I, I really do appreciate that because I do kind of feel like sometimes that gets a little bit lost in so this movie. It definitely got lost in the Raimi films, honestly. And yeah. like the like the, the fact that they, they it was this was the first time you've actually seen Tobey Maguire's Spider Man do science. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you get to see it a little. He, he talks about it with Otto once. Yeah, uh, and they talk. Yeah, and they bring he's, it he's more of like an intern. But like, there. this is the first time we see him do chemistry, which chemistry is Peter's thing. Uh, watching, 
Honestly, watching Toby, Andrew, and Tom all just do science and be psyched about it was like... They, they knew what they had to do. As Spider-Man fans, like the writers, again, like mm -hmm. they knew that we need a scene of Spider-Man doing science together. Because that's they're all scientists, and that's important. Oh, they're just all so... Honestly, they're all just incredibly cute together. Just they the are. way that they behave, the way they talk. It's just... It's charming, and I loved it, and I'm really glad, by the way, that I I was almost certain that the only involvement we were going to get with the Spider-Man was going to be something like closer to the end of the film, where they show up and do their big old cameo. I think, yeah, they gave us just enough time with them. Not too much to where they take over the movie, but enough to where they're, they feel significant. Mm -hmm. and and we, it feels like we get a stretch with the villains, a stretch with the heroes, and then when they all mash up together for one giant fucking finale. And they, and they all get their moments together. I mean, you, you get Tobey Maguire who gets to save Norman Osborn at the end. Yeah, and I really like also how, like, the thing with the villains, like, people, people, I saw people keep saying, like, they, they, how could they not add a six villain and make it Sinister Six? Like, because this isn't the Sinister Six. Yeah. If you're going to do the Sinister Six, it better be people that Peter has a connection to. Yeah. Uh, so if people and, that and, like Spider-Man don't operate like yeah. Sinister Six, they're a bunch of guys with their own motivations. They're they're not really working together. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not. The they're end. not. They're not a team. They just all happen to be there. They all like, just don't want to get sent back to their own universe to except die. Except for what it does. Yeah. But like, yeah, they all have their individual motivations, um, and so they made sure that they're not the Sinister Six because Sinister Six specifically comes together with a common goal. And, and they're also completely single, different characters. Yeah, every single one of the villains had their own distinct goal in the in the third act, which means this doesn't even feel like a kind of Sinister Stick. It's six. It's just a bunch of villains who are there. By the way, I uh, I really like their explanation for why uh, Electro doesn't look like Amazing Spider-Man Electro anymore. I don't even remember really what it was. It's just like, I'm in a new place. There's no, new yeah, power yeah, here. Yeah, he says the energy feels different. And yeah, that, that actually, like... I, I it feels that. like more of a hand wave than an explanation. It, well, does, it actually it, makes sense, though, because specifically, uh, they, they showed in Avengers, back in 2012, that Tony was hooking up uh, arc reactor technology to his tower and, like, making a renewable energy source for the world and, and testing that out. Mm-hmm. Arc, arc reactor energy probably runs most of the world at this point. So the energy does feel different because it's Tony Stark's very distinct technology that doesn't exist in those other so, universes. So that just happened to give this dweeby dude abs, I guess. That, well, well, uh, no, it, no, just, that was... it, cha it just changed how he interacts with the energy and, and how he looks. Yeah, yeah. He's not blue anymore. Yeah, yeah. He's not blue anymore. Now he's yellow. Well, well, now, well now he looks like Electro. Yeah, now <laughs> he looks like Electro. <laughs> Now he looks like Jamie Foxx, let's be As honest. Electric. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, like, he, they even have, like, the, the mask sort of shows up with the electricity. And which kind of I was it's like, I, yeah. I liked it. Also, Jamie Foxx in this film, like, I don't remember. He's having fun. He's yeah. having so much and, and he, fun. And, like, he, he was even kind of, like, teasing the facts, like, I don't know, maybe I'll stick around. I, like, there, there were parts throughout this movie where it's like, maybe they aren't all going to get sent back to their own universes. Like, it, it, it kind of keeps you guessing throughout. Yeah. And they even get, like they gave Jamie Foxx's character like some like they made fun of him a bit. Uh, like they talked about the comb over yeah. and like the gap. He team. fell. He fell into a vat of eels. Yep, yeah, that'd do it. Yeah, they, <laughs> they really they fall. really hit on the eels thing multiple times. Just like that. What a stupid thing. But um, uh, but then they still like gave his character closure where he's like, I'm back to being a nobody when he loses his powers. And Andrew's saying, You're not a nobody. Like like and it's like okay, they care even about this stupid fucking character. Like I I it got quite a laugh out of me. When Jamie Foxx, after like after Electra's been beaten, and he's sitting there with Andrew Garfield, and Andrew Garfield's got the mask off, and he's just like, you know, considering you were, you know, you were in Queens, and you were saving, you know, you were working for the uh, for the average man, I was pretty certain you'd be black. And then Andrew Garfield just responds, with, "I'm so sorry." Yeah, so yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah, Andrew, yeah, Andrew Garfield just goes. Oh man, I'm sorry, man. I'm like, sorry. Just, that's the right reaction. Uh, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe there is a black Spider-Man out there somewhere. It's like, yeah, 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 there is. Yeah, and like, and yeah, and, and his last line is just, "Goddamn eels, man." <laughs> yeah, I, you you get you, you, so you get this moment where like they're all kind of getting like pulled back into their own dimensions, and a very weird like mid-credit scene, which was also kind of the end credit scene of Venom, where Venom gets pulled into the Spider-Man universe, and he's just like talking to like a bartender like so wait like all this not stuff not just a happened? bartender I, I need to point this out oh uh, it's, it's fucking uh, oh man I know his name and not the actor but like the character in Ted. he's a he's an actor in Ted Lasso oh okay. uh, uh, Danny Rojas uh, football is life uh, people who watch Ted Lasso which is a lot of people actually I've heard, uh, I've heard it's very good but it's on Apple so it, it, it's it's worth the five I, bucks. I need to, I need to get Apple TV. It's got too many things. That I that want. in Central Park. That's that's what I suggest. Uh, 
But yeah, like so you, you end up with the scene and it's like it's immediately okay, he's back to his own universe. Except Yeah. Yeah. Which I when I okay, so I did not know many spoilers. I knew about the Spider-Man showing up. I knew they were going to be in the film. Of course, I mean that. But you, but you directly asked me about a spoiler for the for the uh, yeah. at, end credits for, for Venom. Well, specifically because I asked about Venom, and then you alluded it to being an after credits thing. So I was like, just fucking tell me. I want to know because X. Yeah. Don't like I like. It's one of those things where like when people ask me, it's like, and it's like, I mean, don't get your hopes about him being in the movie. Like, yeah, this 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 whole like Sony multiverse thing is really fucking. It's confusing weird. Because, because it's stupid. Yeah, the way they're doing. Because you also have this like Mobius movie that's coming out, and in that movie he talks to fucking um. Oh god, like he talks Vulture, to Vulture. Yeah. He, he he talks to Tombs, but but yeah. he also makes a Venom reference as, and, yeah, and so like that's are they so in the same universe? That's, or? that's technically a different Vulture. Okay. Because yeah, we have. I mean, I guess I guess if J. Jonah Jameson can play the same. Or can be played by the same guy in multiple universes. Yeah, so we have the MCU, and then the SSU, which is the Sony Spider-Man universe. Right. It used to be called the the Sony Universe of Spider-Man uh, characters, uh, Spunk, uh, something like that. Okay. Uh, uh, that's... They, they changed that. Um, and yeah, so Venom and Morbius uh, and that weird version of Tombs that's not actually from the MCU are, are all in the same same universe. Uh, and we don't know what the Spider-Man looks like in that universe. Uh, we don't know if that's Tom Holland or not. Uh, given how Tom Holland's been talking about how overworked he is, probably, probably not. does not want to do double duty. Probably not. I mean, he's got the Uncharted movie coming out in a couple months. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, I mean, apparently so he said that movie broke him. Uh, and that movie looks like fun it looks, enough. It looks like, okay. It doesn't look like a good Uncharted movie, but it looks like it could be a fun movie. It's supposed it to be him when he's younger, so I guess it's whatever. It, it, yeah, it looks like it looks like a fun Mission Impossible I'm movie. I'm far more upset about about fucking Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg being, as Sully. being Sully, because a no, b <laughs> fuck Mark Wahlberg forever. Uh, I don't know. I, I feel like when you, when you violently hate crime people, don't yeah. put them in movies. <laughs> Probably not. But, um, but Mel Gibson keeps getting work, so what the fuck are you gonna do? With Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> but it's fucking okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Um, it, it, yeah, so like there, there are two different universes. That tombs is essentially different, but they're gonna pretend it's the same, probably. And it's just like. Oh, Sony will definitely pretend it's the same. And they wanna make their own Sinister Six movie, which, fuck that. They also want a Madam Web movie. And a That's Craven in production. Movie. A Craven movie. They wanna do a, a Spider Woman movie. I really. Okay, anyway. Yeah, it's, it's, point it's, it's, very confu it's very confusing, but I feel I like. That shit. I feel like Marvel literally threw that scene in there because, like, no, he's not here. My and point. Fuck yeah! But, but we, might, but we yeah. might want that. Hold on. My point yeah. that I wanted to get to before th this all happened. Snowballed, yeah. Um, yeah, the. I was kind of angry when I heard that, that, like, one of the most interesting parts about Carnage for me didn't actually pan out into anything meaningful almost at, at all. all, except the little bit of Venom that was left behind, the little little bit of the symbiote that was left behind. If that's all they were going for, okay, fine. fine. <laughs> I, I really am sad that we didn't get Venom in this movie, but then again, it was already packed, so, okay, I can accept that, but... The fact that we got the symbiote and they gave it away to get in there, okay, cool. You know what? If they want to use the symbiote now, they can. It come, came from another universe, not space this time. Okay. And and Tom Holmes, Peter, is in a prime position to maybe be very angry and and susceptible to what what the symbiote does. It's not like they're doing Battle World anytime soon. So like, yeah. how, are they, how are they gonna have a better way to get the symbiote into the universe? By the way, speaking about an angry Peter, I want to talk about my favorite shot in the movie. Like, yeah, just yeah. flat out. Um, so, throughout, Green Goblin is the villain of the film. The absolute guy who's causing the most fucking trouble. Which, good. I'm glad that not only is Willem Dafoe killing it, yep. um, but he's just the perfect one out of all of them. Because he's the one who's genuinely evil. He Not Nor Norman, but the, like, the fucking psychic, uh, psychosis, psych the goblin. Psychotic break that he's had. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Green Goblin is, like, if you ask people to list Spider-Man villains, he's, you know, at least one of the first three he's somebody will mention. He's basically the Joker for Spider-Man. Yes. So, for him, and, and throughout all of it, he kills Aunt May. Which, by the way, that's kind of why I'm frustrated. When I mentioned earlier that that second film really hurt this trilogy, we got no Aunt May in that film. 
then we finally come back to her and the whole, like the film front loads a lot of her to be like, hey, by the way, Aunt May's here. She, 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 does, she does fly a lot of death flags. Yeah. Um, and then she dies. And so finally it comes down to just like, th for every reason he has to kill this dude. Tom Holland, like Tom Peter. Yeah, I you you absolutely get behind him wanting to murder this dude. Yeah, and during their fight, he dominates him. He's angry and he's focused, and he destroys Goblin. And in that last moment, he picks up the fucking glider. And I love the little nod that, like, you know, it's like, hey, he's probably about to go over the line. He, get, he like looks at Andrew Garfield and's like nods, and then he brings it down, and Toby grabs it, and not. Thank fucking God. I don't know whose decision was the writers, the director, or maybe even Toby and fucking self. No dialogue. Just looks him in the eyes. The look on Toby's face is so good. Yeah, no, it's it's very well acted. It's like, you don't want to do this. I just told you, you don't want to step over that line. And then he gets stabbed in the back. <laughs> and then he gets stabbed, which is perfect. Like, mm -hmm. that's that's absolutely what, what should happen there. And it's just... There are, there are actually a couple moments throughout the film where I almost cried. And that moment, like, was, oh my god. Because it's just, that's actually really good filmmaking. Mm -hmm. Like, from the direction, the, the, the acting on from Toby, it's so good. I was actually blown away. Because, I'm sorry. It, the, is, it is the most I have felt in a theater watching a Marvel movie in a while. Yeah, honestly. Like, I, I like I came close to having an emotional investment in Shang-Chi, but we've already talked about the last third yeah. of that film kind of blew that out of the water. And then Black Widow had moments where I almost got emotionally connected, but it was too busy with its own, like, you know... Uh, uh, anyway, point being, yeah, this... The last half of the... The second half of this movie is... Just one emotional hit after another. And not like sad, but like these beautiful little moments with these characters from these previous films. They spent so much time focusing on their characters, their mythos, their backstories, and as you said, giving them an arc through this film. It's fucking cool. It's like what Stefan said, like this, this movie, the writers, they love Spider-Man. And you can feel that. This movie does feel like a celebration of Spider-Man, kind of in the vein of Spider-Verse in a lot of ways, where that movie is definitely a celebration of Spider-Man. Yeah, that's, like, Spider-Verse is a celebration of Spider-Man as an idea, mm -hmm. and this is a celebration of specifically the cinematic, I guess, at this point, tradition of Spider-Man. Yes. And, like, like the legacy. Also, cute lines, uh, some cute lines that they threw around. I don't know if you guys caught this, but Tom Holland said, uh, uh, Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man says, nice catch. Tom Holland's Spider-Man says, nice throw. Mm -hmm. Referring to the role of Spider-Man. Hmm. Huh. Okay. A Andrew Garfield threw the, threw the role. Yeah, I, 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 it was just a cute little acknowledgement. And also, they, they just made... They, they went out of their way to just establish, like, no, Andrew Garfield is, is a good, is good Spider-Man. And you know what? They made me believe it. Uh, you know what? Considering their roles... Oh my god, Peter, uh, Toby Maguire is absolutely the oldest brother, Andrew Garfield is the awkward middle brother, yeah. and Tom Holland is the little brother. Yeah. Oh my god. It's the baby, yeah. It's perfect. And they're, oh they're so protective of, like, remember, like, remember when Doctor Strange shows up and they're like, you were, where were you? You yeah, could have used You were in help. the Grand Canyon? Like, he they're both your help. So, they're both so mad about, like, essentially their baby brother. Like, Andrew Garfield even says, I always wanted brothers. Like. Oh, it's, it's, oh my god. Also, I, again, I cannot get over the characterization for Andrew Garfield and, and like his Peter in this movie. This, this, is, this is his best moments as Peter. I, I threw this out on Twitter like before the movie came out, and now I'm really... Uh, in, uh, if you want to introduce Scarlet Spider, having Andrew Garfield somehow end up in the MCU and become Scarlet Spider would be perfect. Hmm. Having him, oh. him be Ben Riley. Oh, man. Because uh, uh, the Clone Saga fucking sucks, and I never want to see any of it. Uh, but I like Ben Riley. So if we can get Ben Riley without having the Clone Saga, that's perfect. Speaking of cameos, one that we haven't talked about... Uh, Matthew Murdock showed up. Yes. Oh my god! I, I, I was a little sad we didn't do, like, they didn't get to do a bit more with him. I, but Mar we Marvel did... was so, I bet you, the people at Marvel are so fucking proud that they managed to sync up Kingpin and Matt Murdock showing up mm. at the same time in the MCU. King... Sorry, that's, uh, a, that's a spoiler for Hawkeye, sorry. Yep. Uh, 
I gotta watch Hawkeye. Yeah, you gotta watch it now. It's pretty crazy. Sorry, I, I, by I, the way, sorry for the spoiler for that, but honestly, that just got me more interested in watching Hawkeye. So maybe if it was you also all yet, over Twitter. If you if you pay oh, any attention, if I, you care at all, you know. I, I've been off Twitter for the past couple of days because I knew there'd oh be Spider-Man spoilers I'm out so there already. I'm so glad I haven't watched Hawkeye now because I would have been able to like I. I I had no idea that uh, he was in the uh, Hawkeye. So when I saw Matt Murdock in this movie, it blew my mind. If I'd known that uh, that fucking Kingpin was in Hawkeye, I don't know if I, it would have hit me. I, if I would have been as surprised. Yeah. And, and you get these this kind of fun moment. Although Matt Murdock really giving away the game when he just catches the brick. It's cute because you know it's a wink to the audience. But and, and everybody at that table should have been like. Good punchline. What? <laughs> yeah, great, oh great, great punchline. But everybody at that table is like, aren't you? What? What? Yeah, what? Yeah. Peter's just like, how'd you? How'd you do that? And I'm, I'm a very, I'm a very good, good lawyer. lawyer. Yeah. I also. He's, also, he, also, Charlie Co Cox g jumps into the role like he never missed a beat. He's because he's fucking great. Yeah. He's really fucking good in that role. Also, I want them to do more with him now. Also, he's in the room with Spider-Man. I think he's kind of like okay with maybe if Spider-Man finds out that he's also a superhero. Yeah, uh, and and, uh, and and I want to touch on this before. Like, I really liked the scene they gave Peter and, and Happy before the end. Mm. Oh, at that at, 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 that at, grave. The, at the grave. Like, they, I was wondering but, how they, if they were going to like address that Happy doesn't know Peter anymore because that's honestly the relationship yeah, that feels the most. Well, almost feels the most. It's one of the most sad relationships to lose. Yeah, it's it's so because Peter's like entirely alone now, especially because in Far From Home, like it, he had such a good scene. With yeah, Happy. it does raise a lot of questions. Do all physical media, like all photos of Peter, just like disappear yeah. now too? Wong talked about how it, it, it does distort reality. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Happy wouldn't even have any pictures of him. It would just be like a really oddly framed picture of May. Essentially, yeah. Like, and he remembers May. He remembers he had a relationship with May. He doesn't remember Peter, but he remembers that Spider-Man was involved in in them knowing each other. And essentially, like that spell. Yeah, he, was just... he knew that he knew Spider-Man through yeah. Stark. And I think but... I think it makes enough sense where like that spell is powerful enough to where if a fuck up could create this big of a problem, um, and it has to be a powerful spell to be able to erase information on this wide a scale. Because mm -hmm. um, yeah, there there was a lot of media of him with his yeah. mask off. Yeah, so clearly, now, now that all, all would have had to have gone away. Um, one thing I want to do before we, like, wrap this up is I personally want to just, like, speculate on what the next one will be. Because, like, now the door's wide open. Mm -hmm. All we have is, like, where his character is left at. So, I... we know a couple of things. We know that, uh, basically, this, like, the real end end credit sequence is essentially a trailer for Multiverse of Madness. Right. Where... God help me, is that Shuma Gorath that's just wandering that the Shuma fucking Gorath! streets? <laughs> I, I really hope they were doing something bigger with Shuma uh, Gorath. Oh, but... I'm sure, I'm sure, like, I don't know, okay, it looks exactly like Shuma Gorath, but it also might just be another kind of his species. And you, you also have, like, kind of a pull from What If with, like, the, you know, the Dark Sorcerer Strange, and, um, so that whole thing, I think, is going to be, like, the biggest question mark in this, because what happens there seems to be, like, the big focal point of where everything is going. Meanwhile... Uh, I, I do think we will end up with, you know, Spider-Man being a local hero for a while, but... Well, and yeah, like, like I, I personally want to speculate on, like, what the next Spider-Man movie will be. Okay. Uh, like, that's all I personally care about at this current moment. Because uh, like, I feel like Multiverse of Madness will sort of wrap up the messiness of the multiverse and, like, streamline it, and then... I it, hope it seems God. like God. It seems like Ant-Man is going to deal with Kang a bit. Um, okay. But, like, uh, Quantumania... Is gonna be its own thing too. Um, oh my god, I forgot Quantum Mania is also a thing. Yeah, uh, but um, I'm, I'm not even paying attention to like what's on yeah, the line yeah. right now. There's the third Ant Man movie. That's it. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where. Uh, sorry, let me find my thoughts. They're back. Um, I think this next Spider Man movie, the best thing they can do right now is lean into the aspects of Spider Man where he gets in a dark place where. He just sort of rejects Peter Parker and embraces only Spider-Man, which means I think now is the perfect time to a a yeah do the symbiote. He, he's very angry. He's very lonely. Good time to do it. B Black Cat. Yes, this is I, the th perfect I, th time I think I think Black Cat, Cat is a like because Black Cat in terms of Spider-Man lore is very much about hey which side do you want to choose? Do you want to wear the mask all the time? Do you want to just like you know 
do this, have fun, because yeah. we can, very, like, we can Peter, live... She's very like, Peter Parker's fucking boring. Yeah, Spider-Man's we can, hot, though. We can, we can live however the hell we want, and who's going to stop us? So, as much as I don't like Spider-Man getting involved with the other MCU properties... I, actually, quick question. Is he still MCU? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so, okay, cool. So Same universe. So. Okay, so moving forward, because I feel like it keeps going back to... Well, they, they didn't throw him in a different universe. They gave themselves an out in case they want to not have them cross over okay. much. But it's in the same universe. Right, he so, makes too much money for Disney. <laughs> hey, I don't know. But my point being, um, as much as I don't like him getting involved with the other MCU films, I'll make the exception that I really like him working with the Fantastic Four. Mm -hmm. I think Peter's going to show up in Fantastic Four. It, it'd almost be weird if he didn't. Yeah, but John um, Watts directing, it seems like a thing you could easily do. And I'd love for him to be like, for him to work under Reed Richards. Like, he's... he. He needs something to do with his gets life. Gets an internship or gets like a job at the Baxter building or something. Exactly. Becomes friends with Johnny. I, I, I really think that they're going to build the, the, the fucking Fantastic Four building, like with everything that comes with that. It's it, it's heavily implied that that's what Avengers Tower is turning into. Oh, yeah. That's that's definitely what the Baxter building is. And after that, um, I, I'd like to think that, that that'll introduce some new stuff for Peter to do. So for in his next film, I don't think they're going to do Venom in the next film. They might not. They, um, if, they, uh, I, Mar I, I Marvel does sometimes do that thing where their mid credit scene is something like, it'll happen eventually. Like, remember Guardians 2 and how they introduced whatever the fuck Golden Boy was? It's like, okay, what, what the fuck Oh is my that? god, we're still not anywhere close to that, are we? He's been cast, but uh, um, it's going to be Will Poulter. Um, okay, I still don't know what that character is. I still have no idea what it's supposed to be involved with. Okay, I won't tell you then. Okay. You guys can find out later. Um, but... Uh, now, I, I don't think they should do Venom in the next movie. I just think the black suit should be in the next movie. I think they should stretch that out for once instead of rushing it like they always do. I do think um, I do think we might get Black Cat in the next movie, though. And I, I agree. I, th Black I think thematically that works really well right now. At yeah. where he is in life, yeah. Uh, Especially since he's single. Yes, exactly. Because Zendaya is going to be probably going to be in the next movie. At some, like She probably can't pay for MIT. They set that up. Mm -hmm. Um so, so she's probably. Gonna... Oh my God, she works. Oh my God, she also works at the Fantastic Four building, and he and and so Peter's like, do I or don't I? Yeah, like there's a lot of good stuff they can do now, and I think MJ's gonna stay in the movie, but I think they're gonna have to start from square one. And he's gonna try to be keeping his distance, and he's gonna have to choose MJ or Black Cat, Peter or Spider Man. Like, mm. like, is he going to just reject? Unless Peter they also entirely? introduce a Gwen Stacy, which would be kind of weird after putting all yeah. of this on. Yeah. Uh, but like he's definitely gonna be working at the Bugle. Uh, they gotta do Get, that. getting pictures for getting pictures of Spider Man. Yeah, and doing demeaning things like uh, um, and Betty's gonna be at the Bugle. Uh, oh, Betty being there, I was, I was, it was just a sad. Be Betty's running Betty. the Daily Bugle's TikTok right now. So yeah, <laughs> um, so she's an intern, so she's probably gonna be working there. Um, and yeah, so like there's all this stuff that 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 can be really cool to follow up on. But who would be your villain of that movie? I think Craven would be great. Yeah, I you. think Scorpion would be great to pair, pair up with Craven. Yeah, I was I was gonna say if they don't do Craven, I'm gonna be sad because I've been wanting Craven for a while. I've been Craven, 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 Craven. There you go. Yeah, um, they, they can do they can do they can do Craven and Scorpion in the same movie and have it, especially if I mean it, it, with the new Spider-Man game, Craven's the villain in that. So well, and and with the you know with with this version of, of J. Jonah Jameson being fairly villainous. Uh, him funding uh, Scorpion like he generally does in the comics and being responsible for creating Scorpion specifically to get Spider-Man makes a ton of sense. Like, in the Raimi ones, iffy. Because he's right. not that bad of a guy. Yeah, he actually stands up for... But this version, he would absolutely <laughs> like get have a mech suit made and like have this delusion of grandeur about, I'm going to take down Spider-Man myself! Oh my god. Uh, also, uh, before we... Hold on. One thing I wanted to touch on from the movie proper before we end this because yeah. it emotionally affected me. The scene in the donut shop after, like, after the finale when, climax, when, it was nice. like, yeah, yeah, with him, uh, Ned, and MJ. It was another really well acted scene because you can see like the like the everything going on in his head. Like after he realizes, okay, cool, they both got into MIT, they're they're doing good in life, and then he sees the cut on her head. It's like, if she's not around me, that won't happen to her. 
she'll stay safe. You can literally see like all the arithmetic going on in his head. And, it's really good. Yeah. It's, it's really good, well visually told. Yes. Um, and, and Which is a what the, the film does, goes a long way to tell our show instead of telling. I think John Watts has really improved as a director for this film, which is, again, given the time crunch they had, very impressive. Um, this this entire movie is extremely impressive in terms of like they were writing on the spot they were like putting this movie together with like you know duct tape like like trying to make it happen um, and it wasn't even the movie that that Watts originally wanted to make because he wanted to make a Craven movie next which would have made a lot of sense honestly yeah uh, I kind of wish we still gotten that Craven movie and maybe this could happen after that but still. Uh, th this movie's good, and like Watts is definitely improving as a director. I'd like to see what he does with Fantastic Four, because um, it almost feels like he's been learning throughout these Spider-Man films how to best tell these kinds of stories. Um, and it's been a bit clumsy. There's been mistakes here and there, but he's really getting there. Yeah, it was just a heartbreaking scene. Uh, honestly, I I was like the the moment I saw like him looking at them both and realizing, oh my God, they're living a life without me. And they're, and they're happy. happy. Yeah. Oh God. It, it, like even I was like, maybe you shouldn't tell them, dude. And yeah. And I, and I liked how uh, how Tom Holland carries himself like a man now, as mm -hmm. as Peter. He doesn't he doesn't carry him like a teenager anymore. Like you can see in that scene, like he just carries himself differently, where he feels like an adult, which is interesting. I mean, he just went through like a massive trial. Like this this whole trilogy has been a coming of age thing for him. Yeah. And seeing the older Spider-Man, it's it's almost a literal passing of the torch of Spider-Man with that group hug at the end, yeah. where now he's the Spider-Man. Yeah. This whole trilogy was one giant origin story. Yeah, which <laughs> what, I, I what we finally got. Yes, because we finally got the great we got the great responsibility line. No, I mean, I'd, I'd argue you don't actually need the line. You don't need it, but no, no it, one it, said it directly in the comics. Uh, yeah, but it, but it, it, it had that poignancy to yeah. it. Um, but like, and I also liked in that in that final scene as well. I liked that MJ clearly kind of got a feeling from Peter. Mm. Maybe she just thought he was hot. But <laughs> can't blame her. But like, she she clearly had like some sort of feeling with Peter where she's like, "Who is this guy?" Yeah, yeah. He's like, because he's coming off like very genuine. He clearly looks like he cares about her, and that's yeah. got to be weird to her. So it's clearly stirring yeah, something but I, up. But I definitely hope they don't drop Zendaya and Jacob Batalone. Uh, I can't imagine they would, especially after introducing the fact that he's essentially a sorcerer now. So Yeah, and, and they're great characters. I, they have a great chemistry with each other because they're all genuinely friends, and I think that really helps. Mm -hmm. uh, and, like, I do want to see them explore other things with Spider-Man. Again, I, I'd like to see them explore a relationship with Black Cat right now because now is the perfect time to do it. it. You're right. If they're going to use Black Cat, yeah. He's going to have this dichotomy now of, like, I have nothing as Peter Parker. Why not just be Spider-Man? Plus, you're also in this, like, great situation where, yeah, he does have to be Spider-Man now because uh, while Tom Holland still looks very young, he can't be a boy forever. Now he has his own apartment, and so when, like, the next movie takes a couple years to make and he all of a sudden maybe has, like, a line or so on his face, he it makes sense. The, he must be the Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, I will say one thing that does kind of annoy me as a Spider-Man fan is uh, Toby and... And Andrews Peters both brought up Uncle Ben, and Tom Holland's Peter didn't say, I lost my Uncle Ben too. They still didn't have him ever mention his Uncle Ben. Maybe he never had years. an Uncle Ben. He, oh, did, no, he did, Oh, the, he did? Yeah, the first film mentions Uncle Ben, but really... And, okay, so they always swept that under the rug at this point. I it's, think, it's distracting. Now. Like, I'm glad... I'm actually kind of glad they didn't try... Because if they had, it would have felt so disingenuous. At this point, though, I just want the next movie, and th this could work on multiple levels, so follow me here. Uh, I want the next movie to open with a flashback to when Aunt May and Uncle Ben were together, so bring back Miss Marissa Tomei for one scene. Uh, get a good actor to play Uncle Ben. I've seen some good suggestions. I, I, I suggested Steve Carell a while ago. Hmm. Someone else suggested uh, a Jason Sudeikis, again, because of Ted Lasso and, like, the... Oh, Jason Sud... What? Really? He's a, he's a lead of Ted Lasso, and he has a very warm presence. Okay. Uh, but, like, e I, I either of them could work. Uh, and, and, but, like, bring it... Have a scene of, like, really young Peter. Like, really young Peter. Mm -hmm. When he's happy, when he's with his aunt Like, Iron old. Man 2, Peter. <laughs> Yeah, like, like, yeah, exactly. Like, where he's really young, he's with his aunt and uncle, he's happy, they're, they're, they have a great relationship, that, and then cut directly to his life now, right? Where he's completely alone. And so you get that, that con confirmation of, yes, Uncle Ben was there, yes, he's someone he cared about who he lost. Uh, get a little bit more of Marissa Tomei as Aunt May, which I think we all want a bit more of her. I, here's the thing. I mean, we're getting that show, right? 
Uh, yes. Oh yeah, we are. So I, th- so I think you will get more. A little bit, yeah. Huh. Uh, and then, and then, yeah. And then you cut to his current life, which is sad. And then you have that dichotomy set up of like, this is what my life was, and this is what it is now. It's empty. Yeah. Uh, and that's a good. That that'll do two jobs at once, essentially. Um, yeah. Uh, overall, good. Yeah. I highly recommend. Definitely worth a holiday watch. Yeah, absolutely. I I'm so glad. Again, I went into this film. I, like, I was dreading it. The moment they announced that it was multiverse shit, I was like, oh, okay, well, I, I guess yeah. I'll end up watching it. I've watched every other Spider-Man movie in theaters, and then I came out of this, like, emotionally satisfied. So. Yeah, I, I liked it, just despite the issues I had with the concept as, at the core. Again, they did it as good as I would ever expect them to. So, yeah. I, I think that's a fairly glowing recommendation for me. And yeah. feel free to let us know what you thought of the movie in the comments below, or if you have any feelings on any of our hot takes. Please, let us know how wrong we are. We love hearing how wrong we are on the internet. We also love engagement. So. I won't read it. <laughs> I love hearing how wrong we are. I almost certainly will read it. I Because you I, can't help yourself. I can't! And now we sit back and wait for the Matrix. So forward.